that those are the circumstances. Sigsby was a terrible authoritarian, did not brook any interruption or any anything, any participatory interactions from anybody, especially little girls or daughters or anything like that. And um, my mother tells me a story one time about how when she was little, uh, she knew uh, Foxy, as they call his nickname was Foxy. He was expecting a visit from the uh, Queen, I think, of Denmark at this time. They were, they were in Washington. And he had grand mustachios waxed. And he would train them by wrapping them in a little bit of toilet paper out at the end, which he would, of course, remove in a timely manner. Except on this day, he was so frazzled, he forgot to remove the little, little twists of toilet paper and was dashing about the house getting ready, and the girls were saying, uh, 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 Grandpa, Grandpa, Grandpa. <laughs> and he was like, I don't want to talk to you, don't talk to me, don't talk to me. And so he greeted the Queen of Denmark at the door with his mustachios with the little bits of toilet paper still at the end. It shows to go, you listen to your family. <laughs> uh, uh, Aunt May was also an illustrator, also an artist. Um, she had been married once before to a fellow named Balfour Carr, K-E-R, nephew of Alexander Graham Bell. Why is this important? Well, uh, the issue of that marriage was a boy named David, who, uh, whom Uncle Otto adopted when they, uh, when they uh, became married. Uh, Balfour Carr did not stick. Um, he, uh, they, were, they, were all, they were all artists. Antonato Fisher, um, Mary Ellen Sigsby, Balfour Carr, they were all artists studying in Paris and back here. They all studied with the same guy, the same illustrator, a fellow named Howard Pyle. How many of you have owned or know about the copy of Howard Pyle's Book of Pirates? <laughs> okay, well, it's, it's the most wonderful. I, I've had you know, numerous copies ever since I was a kid. Big, beautiful, lavish, colorful illustrations of, of pirates uh, and stories of the pirates. Marvelous book. Uh, great, probably one of the most successful and famous American illustrators of all. The thing that joined these three people, and I think what ultimately introduced them all to each other, was their work with Howard Pyle. You look at N.C. Wyeth, and you'll see Howard Pyle. You look at Antonato Fisher, you'll see Howard Pyle. You know, it's all art is derivative, they say. No shame in that. But uh, uh, once the uh, marriage to uh, Balfour Carr uh, went up in flames. He left a note on his atelier uh, door saying, uh, back in half an hour, <laughs> never came back, uh, ran off to Paris with his model. Uh, and uh, this, was, this was a subject of some chagrin, a lifelong uh, chagrin to, uh, to uh, Uncle, uh, to, to, I'm sorry, to Anne uh, particularly because of what came subsequently, which I'll get to. Um, but uh, Uncle Otto finished up his, uh, his, his travels around the world, got off to San Francisco, rode the rails like a bum across the country, everybody was doing it, um, wound up uh, working for some rich folks with great big yachts on Long Island Sound, sailing uh, as racing crew. Yes? Did he paint while he went across the country? Did he stop off and... I don't, I have never heard of anything from that exact period, riding the rails. That would be interesting. That would be just the sort of thing you'd expect, you know, hobos around a fire kind of thing. But uh, I've never seen nor heard. There may be Few some... Of them did. They would hop off, hang in a town, get food, board, and leave a couple of paintings behind. As, yeah. So I just wondered. Yeah, he may have. He uh, he got he uh, he he did he, he just started to discover his artistic temperament on this voyage, oh. uh, and the way it happened was he was asked to give tattoos to guys. Yeah. So he would he would draw the you know the square rigged ship or the buxom woman or something like that, and uh, and draw it out there, and then either he or somebody else would do the horribly painful needlework um, for the tattoos. So. Uh, that was that was uh, the beginning of his of his artwork, and there's also the, this, you know, which is a, you know, he was he was that's him hanging over the over the bow, decorating, uh, going a little bit overboard and beyond the call of duty, decorating the, the figurehead. Um, so uh, you know, eventually, Uncle Otto moved into the art world. He studied in Paris, also met Mary Ellen Sigsby on the rebound from this creep 
and, uh, and, uh, and they, they got married. Uh, they had young David. They moved to Bushnellsville uh, in, uh, near Shandig. And that was, that was their summer home between there and New York. Studied at the uh, Junior League, I'm sorry, the Art Students League, <laughs> and, um, and worked and began illustrating, began making money, began, began careers. Um, Uncle Otto was quite conservative. And he vehemently opposed, for instance, the New Deal. He did not care for the New Deal. He thought it was socialism. Aunt May was an avowed socialist <laughs> and spiritualist. Her illustration work, she, worked, she, she did social illustration. Her stuff always told a story. There would, be, there would be a message and a glance between a bum and a little child, for instance, standing in a doorway cowering like this in a little white pinafore and the bum walking with this famous picture, I have it uh, uh, here in Woodstock, uh, the bum carrying a great burden of, of you know, his possessions on his back. You've seen these people. And, and he's trudging along, and he, he's looking sidelong at this little girl, and she's looking, and the name of the picture is just Atlas. And it's talking about what this guy's burden is and what sort of message is being communicated back with the electricity between the little girl and the, and the old guy really moving stuff. She also did a lot of cartooning for uh, newspapers and uh, magazines. She was worked very closely with a number of the historic figures in, uh, in uh, suffrage. Um, and then, poof, um, you know, she subordinated her career to, uh, to Uncle Otto's, raised uh, David. David was becoming sick. Uh, it raised Winky, who came along. And, uh, and was a mother. Uh, and then David died uh, at the age of 15 or 16. Um, here, he died hallucinating. He died hearing the sounds of a great battle in the French Revolution outside the house somewhere. He kept talking about the cannons, the cannons, they're coming. Uh, and so, and, and that's, that's how he died. It's a very, very sad tale. Um, there's a beautiful portrait that she did of him as a young boy with, with sort of feminine, you know, hair, one of those bowl haircuts in an oval shape. It's a beautiful thing. Um, and, you know, David, uh, I, don't think, I don't think Aunt May smiled ever again. I never, ever saw her smile. And that was just one of those, one of those uh, awful things. Uh, I have no idea what it was like living in a divided household politically. They were always civil, but you know, whenever I'd come over there, Uncle Otto would have a cigar in his mouth. He would be playing the piano in his garden, in the studio, or listening to the Yankees mm. on the radio <laughs> through headphones, so nobody could disturb him. So, you know, and, and he'd always be in profile, kind of like Whistler's mother only, with <laughs> headphones and a cigar a great mustache. they would be listening to the Yankees. You could just hear the little whisper of, of um, the announcer, uh, you know, echoing out of the deck of the Did you find it cold and distant? Yeah. Had no time for little boys. Nor did Aunt May. Nor did Wakey. Uh, why were we there then? <laughs> well, therein lies a little bit of a tale. What, what I, years was it? What, excuse me, what year was that that you knew your grandfather? Um, I was... Uh, for basically from the day I was born till the day they died in '62. By then, I was off in um, in Vermont at a at a private school, but uh, it was primarily from let's say '50, '51, '52 <coughs> when I was really little through um, uh, you know '1960. Let's say '1958. Uh, Aunt May died in 1960, and that pretty much put a stop to the visits. Uncle Otto started to get sick, and um, our 